All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Keep It Simple Social Media Social Chats interview. Today, we are we are joined by uh, Craig Baroni. He's a um, top-selling realtor, and he also has a really great presence on video. I discovered him to YouTube, and I thought the content he was sharing was really, really interesting. Um, this is a live broadcast. So what it means is that you can get involved with our guest, you can ask questions, um, and we will see these questions pop up live on our screen. Now, we're going to keep this broadcast um, on our Facebook page. We're also going to download it and put it to YouTube, and we're going to add it to our um, blog on keepitsimplesocialmedia.com, along with keynotes and any links we have so you can watch it in the future. Um, a quick note about Social Chats. Social Chats is a weekly live show that we've put together to help small business learn from people who stand out in their industry. Um, what they do works well with social media, and we hope this is going to keep you educated and entertained. So without the further ado, I'm going to bring in, and this is my favorite part of the show, Heather knows that, it's the applause. Um, is it going to work? Woohoo! <laughs> okay, I need to stop the applause. <laughs> okay, hi, Craig. Hi, how are you? I'm great. So thank you so much for joining us today. We were just chatting in the back end there before the show started, and we had so much to um, talk about because... Um, you've embraced video and and you do a really good job at it. But before we start, how about you um, tell us a bit about more about you, how you started uh, in real estate, with a bit of your background, and maybe when you started with video. Certainly. So I've been in real estate now for eight years. This is my eighth year in business. And prior to this career, I was a professional film and television actor working in various TV shows, uh, feature films, and, and that sort of thing that were filmed here in Vancouver and abroad. And was lucky enough to do that for well, well over a decade and make a living at it. That was my sole uh, means of income at that time. So I was very fortunate in that regard. But back in 2008, when the global financial crisis hit, the industry in Vancouver changed dramatically and a lot of the business went east to Toronto and I was left, you know, trying to figure out what I what I wanted to do, whether I wanted to stay in that industry or, or change industries. And ultimately, after a couple of years, I decided that I did want to uh, change uh, jobs, get into a, a different uh, line of work where I had more control over my life. Uh, it's very tough as an actor, you know, once you walk into that audition room, you have complete control there of your audition. But once you walk out, uh, you're at the mercy of directors, producers and, and what whatnot. So I uh, made the decision to get into real estate. It's one of the best decisions I've made in my life. I absolutely love my job. But it wasn't until just a couple of years ago that I actually started embracing video and using that in my business. One would think that as an actor, it would have been sort of natural for me to, to utilize that from the beginning. But I actually felt that I needed to put my previous career aside and, you know, sort of not talk about the fact that I was an actor or highlight that fact because I felt that I needed to prove myself as a business person first. Um, I didn't think people would want an actor listing their home, but that was my own hang up. And uh, I wish I, I wish I didn't have that hang up because had I started utilizing video in my business, you know, when I, when I started, I would be so much further ahead now. I mean, the, the jump that's happened just in the past two years has been phenomenal. So I certainly wish I'd started six years prior to that. Huh? So this is really cool because I was doing some research on you. I like to Google our <laughs> Google our guests, and I was like, 
Okay, Stargate Atlantis came up and two for the country, uh, two for the money and yeah. Matthew McConaughey and Al Pacino. And I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. this guy knows video. And I'm really surprised that you say that it was not um, something that you decided to embrace from the beginning considering your background. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool that you uh, decide to put it together. And I like how life comes about sometimes that all of a sudden, all of the pieces of the puzzle make sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was it was actually a video boot camp that uh, Michael Thorne and Jesse Peters were holding here in Vancouver. Huh. Uh, which, and so that's where the spark happened for me. I attended that boot camp, and and the light bulb just went off. I mean, you know, it, it made complete sense, and um, I actually felt this massive weight off of my shoulders because I didn't need to feel like I was sort of putting on this business persona anymore. I felt like I could just be myself on camera. And uh, so the last two years have, have been incredible. I was very fortunate to be named one of the top 50 video influencers in real estate, you know, for the last two consecutive years. Um, it was a massive honor. And um, yeah, so the, the notoriety, the recognition is great. But what it's done for my business uh, has been phenomenal. And that, of course, was the, the motivation for me. You know, I, I certainly didn't start utilizing video to get awards or accolades or anything like that. This was a, a business decision, and it's been incredible. Hmm. Perfect. So let's dive right into it. So do you sure. use video for your listing? So how do, does the whole process go for either getting more um, attraction from buyers, from sellers, and how do you go about kind of filming or when you have a new listing or a property? Like, talk to us a little bit about the process behind it all. Certainly. So I, when I decided that I was going to use video in my business, I had already been using video uh, with BombBomb, Bomb, which is a, a company that, that allows you to send one-to-one -one videos from your laptop, your desktop, your, your mobile phone. And I was using that to connect with my, my database and my clients on a one-to-one -one basis. So I'd already been doing that for you know, probably four or five years prior to jumping in to you know, what I do now. And I decided that I was going to utilize video in all aspects of my business. So I started immediately doing uh, the 30 and 30 series that I did, which was my 30 favorite places in North Vancouver. And that was highlighting, you know, things, businesses, places in, in my community. And um, I then broadened that out, obviously, to uh, interviewing with mortgage brokers and home inspectors contractors and that sort of thing so that there was an educational portion of, of the content that, uh, that I was producing as well. Now, of course, I do use video in uh, any listing that I, that I take. And I, all of my video content is shot by me, edited by me. So I do all of that work except for my listing videos. For that, I hire a professional to come in and, and you know, video me and, and edit the whole thing uh, because I just don't have the time to do that. And I want it done professionally and, and superbly. So I hire a professional to do all my listing videos, but everything else, all my other content is shot by me. So I like the way that you've brought up different types of content, because this is something that um, we come across a lot when we teach our social media bootcamp. People say, well, this is great with video, but I don't know what to talk about. I have no idea what we, what I should be talking about. And then we say, well, think a bit outside the box, like your neighborhood, your industry. So how, do you, how did you came about? And also, I really like how you do series, because there's a lot to be said for um, episodic content so when people know there's a start to an end there's a series it feels like um, a bit like a netflix uh when you see oh there's 20 episodes and then you start and you know where it's gonna and so i really like that so how do you come up with content and do you think it's a lot of work and it's a lot of time so do you think that all that is kind of worth it on a, on a marketing uh point of view so it's kind of a double question ideas for content and marketing strategy a little bit 
Sure. So let's start with the first question, which was my ideas for content or, or how do I come up with ideas for content? When I first started uh, coming out of the video boot camp, they issued a challenge. And the challenge was go out and try and shoot 30 videos in 30 days, highlighting places and, and businesses in your community. So that, that's where I started. And from that, um, I've grown and you know, started incorporating, as I said, educational content and other bits of content. Essentially, you know, there's, a, there's a massive community out there. There's two Facebook groups that I'm a part of. One is called RE Video Studio, and the other one is Remax Play. Remax Play is only for Remax agents, but RE Video Studio is open to, to anyone from any brokerage. And those are fantastic forums because you know, we we're, we all collaborate there. We we exchange ideas. We share the latest videos that we have created, uh, asking for feedback, and so that is a phenomenal place not only to learn and get inspiration from other people, but to to see what other people are doing. And um, so for myself, after the thirty and thirty, which was uh, you know my thirty favorite places in North Vancouver, I. I decided my next series, I wanted to do another series, and the series that was born was My Favorite Humans in Vancouver. And that's been a, a phenomenal series. It, it's really a labor of love because it's a much longer video format series, ranging anywhere from about, I think the shortest one is maybe 12 minutes, and the longest is probably about 35 minutes. So, and quite often I'm sitting down with someone um, who's you know, a person who I think is one of it's one of my favorite humans in Vancouver doing incredible things. So invariably, I'll have anywhere from 90 minutes to 120 minutes of video to try and edit down. So that, that series has been very well received, but it is a lot of work. So I've just finished season one. So there were seven episodes. It took me just a little over a year to finish that their first season. And the next season is coming up. I'm going to be switching up the format to a podcast format. So it's going to make my life easier. Where you know I'll be sitting down. We're still we're still going to film it, um, but it'll be in a podcast format where I don't have to do the the editing that I was doing before. And um, you know because that it takes up a lot, editing takes up a lot of time. Shooting this content takes up a lot of time. So that leads me into that next question of yours, which was, do I feel that this is worth it for my business? Absolutely, 100%, hands down. Um, but video is just a tool. You know, there, there are lots of people out there who say, I, I don't know if I should get into video. I'm thinking about getting into video. But I always say to them, well, don't do it unless you really feel like you want to, you know, that it's going to be good for your business. It's just a tool. Some people are, are more comfortable door knocking or, or cold calling. And if that's your bag, then go for it. But that's not mine. You know, this is the way that I feel is best for me and my business to not only engage with, with potential clients and customers, but provide content that I think is, is really of value to people. And so I enjoy it. Yes, it's a ton of work, but anything that I would be doing for my business to generate you know, more business would be a ton of work. Any, any, any business owner or entrepreneur is going to tell you the same thing that no matter what you're doing, it's going to require work. So choose your pain. You know, you wake up every day and you get to choose, choose what your pain is. So my pain happens to be video and I love it. Um, as painful as it is sometimes. Yeah. Um, so podcasting, this is cool because I think um, it's funny for a while people thought like radio was just going to disappear. I listen to podcasts all the time and I think it's interesting yeah. also for longer, longer format because people can listen to podcasts in their commute or when they're going for a walk or doing something else. So I think that's going to be um, super fun. I absolutely love your series about the... With uh, your favorite humans, I thought that was really, really nice and it, it really inspiring. Is, Thank is you. Thank so you. great Thank job you. on that. Um, would you have like tips? So we know not everyone is comfortable with video. A lot of people knew they sh they they know they should be tackling it, but um, 
so any tips and because you have a background as an actor i think it's, it's phenomenal because you can really um maybe have more <laughs> more tips than the average joe so do you have any tips for people starting out in terms of where do you even start and how you go about it and um yeah little tips to make it less intimidating say well as i said this is simply a tool that you can choose to utilize or not so if if it makes sense for someone to utilize video in their business then they're going to find ways to overcome those obstacles you know in front of them I mean, there's always going to be obstacles when you're taking on something new or learning something new for me it, it, yes i was completely comfortable in front of the camera with because of all of my training but i had absolutely no experience with editing so on the other side of the the camera i had zero experience and that was really daunting for me i you know to this day Editing is my is my number one nemesis because it it does take time and then of course the more videos you do the more you you're you're you know putting out content the better you want to make it so with each video I want to get better and and that means continuing to learn so the the learning curve never stops and but that's just that's just an obstacle in, that I needed to overcome because I wanted to embrace video in, in all aspects of my business. And I feel that if someone chooses that they are going to utilize video in their business, then whatever obstacles, I mean, they may have a tech background, they may be completely, you know, adept at editing and, and all of that stuff, which, which I think is actually one of the tougher parts of the job. I think being on camera is quite easy and, and you can learn, you know, certain tips and tricks to help yourself look better or sound better on camera. So we all come we all come to the table with different skill sets. And I think that if you choose to use video in your business, you will figure out what your strengths are and then focus on on your weaknesses to to make those stronger as well, which is which is what we all have to do. In terms of being on camera certainly there there are lots of tips and tricks the the easiest thing to realize is that this is just a piece of glass between you and the person you're talking to or the audience that you're speaking to so don't let it intimidate you and one of the easiest tricks is to think of someone particular uh, specific that you're actually speaking to so when I'm recording uh, a video, I actually will think of someone, you know, pick someone who I, be, you know, believe that I'm I'm speaking to, just to make the engagement more real, more sincere, and expression, eye contact, voice intonation, all of that sort of thing comes into play as well. So when you're on camera, you're not your normal self. Your energy needs to be raised a little bit. Your voice needs to be more inflective and uh so there are little tips and tricks but those are easily learned and easily figured out and you can practice with yourself you know you can practice and see how you sound on video one way and then with a little bit more energy or so yeah so that that would be my advice okay uh, there's lots of uh, of little points here that I, I really like so we like to put a little circle next to the camera so that oh you look in the eye of the camera and then you think or sometimes i cut this little thing in, as a smile so you remember to smile uh kind of bigger than normal remember to smile and then you look at this little face thinking this is so and so ideally my my target customer or a friend or something so we can definitely my really do that <laughs> yeah, smiling is absolutely huge. If you if you do nothing else, <laughs> yeah. but simply smile a lot in your videos, then then you're well ahead of everybody else. That's uh, that's yeah. one of the big keys is to continue to smile all the time. You know, uh, and it 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 may feel weird at at first by doing that, but I'm always thinking when I'm recording a video, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, right? Because Tom Cruise <laughs> smiles all the time. All yeah. the time, and it's enjoyable. People find them charming. So, but that is one of the big keys, of course. Yeah, smile, 
smile. Yeah, start with a smile. I even bring, when we film for climbing, I bring lip balm because the ladies' lips crack after a while. Yes. Okay. Yes. We, so, uh, we, all, we, all carry a little, we all carry a little lip balm around. With oh, there you go. <laughs> that, that's my <laughs> lip balm. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so that and video editing. I'm glad that you mentioned yeah. that. And I'm glad that you mentioned that you shoot your videos on your own, except for listing. And we say that also with photography. There is a time for a professional photographer. There is a time for a professional videographer. And there is a lot that you can do with your smartphone these days. Um, and Heather and I absolutely love buying gadgets and gear and video equipment and photography equipment. A lot of it is to test so we can say this works, this doesn't, but also because it really enhanced um, the experience. So what would you suggest in terms of equipment and in video editing or photo editing? Um, in terms of equipment, I would say simple simple is better i mean your your name is keep it simple social media so that's <laughs> that's my motto as well is keep it simple don't try uh, unless you know how to use video gear already unless you are completely confident in using you know these various pieces of technology already don't try and complicate your life by adding another obstacle or hurdle in front of you you know I, when i Started, I knew that okay, my weakness is video editing and 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 the tech side of things. I wouldn't consider myself, you know, completely tech savvy. So I needed to figure out how to overcome those obstacles, and the best way to, for me to do that was to to keep it simple. So to this day, uh, for the first year, actually, I shot everything on an iPhone 5s. Oh, so I I've only had my iPhone 8 now for maybe a year and a half, I guess. Um, but prior prior to that, everything was done on my iPhone 5S. And I still shoot everything on my iPhone. I don't own um, any other camera. I invested in um, a DJI Osmo gimbal, which is a handheld gimbal. Uh, and that's phenomenal. And you'll want a tripod. So when you're filming your own content, you can set up a tripod. I've got a little uh, Joby cell phone camera mount that goes on top of the, the tripod. And then I can just put that anywhere and record myself. And sound is very important when you're recording video. So from the get-go, I invested in a, a Rode Lav mic. They're very inexpensive. I think maybe $30, $40 for, for a Lav mic that you simply plug into you know your your phone or your camera whatever you're using to to film yourself so that's the that's completely the extent of my equipment right now i don't have a lot because i feel like the more equipment that i get um the more cumbersome it feels and actually the less i feel like getting out and just shooting video so i try to keep it as simple as possible because of the My Favorite Humans in Vancouver episode, where I'm interviewing, um, you know, another person that is two of us, I did invest. Uh, Rode has something called the Rode, what's it called? The Rode Lav Mic Interview Kit, I think it's called. And that is a little device that plugs into the phone, and then you can plug two. It comes with two lav mics that you plug into that, and so you can record both people simultaneously while you're recording your video and that was fantastic to be able to record all that video i a lot of times too i will i have an extra cell phone an iphone that i sometimes just use to record my audio separately so sometimes i will just be shooting and then record the audio set separately and then sync that up with the video in post but audio is really important if you can if you can first of all you want to shoot great content and get good audio and you know then your videos will certainly look great but that's i mean I, I try not to take on a lot of equipment right now because i don't feel like i need to and in terms of the editing software i use i started with iMovie and used that for a while but then i, I got to a point 
I was using a lot of, I was shooting a lot of content on my 360 camera. Oh, sorry, I do have a 360 camera. <laughs> um, so the Insta360 One camera is what I, I have. Um, but that required me getting additional editing software. So I, I bought Final Cut Pro 10 and have been using that for about a year. But again, that was a massive, massively steep learning curve to you to learn how to use that program. And uh, I'm still trying to still trying to figure that one out. Um, so yeah, I try and that's why I'm moving to the podcast with with my favorite humans in Vancouver, because I'm continually look, le, looking for ways to simplify my life, right? When you start shooting a ton of content, particularly now, my goal is to shoot and edit and have one piece of content a week, which is a lot. Um, you want to find ways to simplify your life. Yes. So the I like... Um... I found also that with podcasts and also sometimes with video, if you batch your content and you decide, okay, let's shoot like three in a row, you've got your, well, for girls, you got your makeup on, you're like in the, in yeah. the groove and then you can be efficient at it. Um, Final Cut Pro is good. I just started Adobe Premiere and the learning curve is, it's hard. And mm. everything actually that you start, and that's, I think, important for people to do. You're not going to master everything right away, but go get out there put yourself out there and try it out and that's how that's how you learn little by little um do yeah. you have any type of lighting that you use like lights the sun oh yeah uh, okay good <laughs> <laughs> that's easy i shoot i shoot a lot outdoors because yeah. you know the the sun is the best key light out there and um when i'm inside I, uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm careful about looking at, at how my shot looks before I start filming. I do try to make sure that the lighting is good. I don't have any extra lights. I don't, I, I don't have a lighting kit or anything like that. So right now I'm simply in my, you know, in my home, the blinds are all open and, and I've got, a, you know, the, um, the overhead light in, in front of me here at the dining table. Um, I actually have that dimmed down about halfway because it was a little too bright but yeah be, being aware of your light is good i know some people use the little selfie ring lights uh for their cell phones so i recently received one of those and it is fantastic you know when you're indoors in low light conditions having this little this little ring light yes i see it there in your hand that you can clip onto your cell phone makes a huge difference um but again that's that's something very simple low tech easy to carry around with you i don't have big lights or anything like that you know that, hmm. that i utilize i know some people have some people have a home office or uh, a studio that they've set up in their home i unfortunately don't have that don't have that space um so i have to keep it simple Love how you keep plugging our company name. <laughs> That's right. Keep it simple. So it's yes, the best really, advice. It really is the yeah. best advice. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And you know what? I think your light is phenomenal. You have a great background. Like if you had to do market updates from inside your house, go for it. Cause, um, cause yeah, it's, it's looking really good. Um, Thanks. believe it or not, we have 60 seconds left, but I'd like wow. you to mention your, uh, HGTV episode or how to, what is it? Market your house like if it's a H if it's a HGTV show. Yeah, that was the that was the last piece of content I just put out on YouTube. It's um it's for sellers, you know, and and the title of the the video is um, selling your home in 2019: Why you should market your home like it's an HGTV show. And the whole premise behind this is two years ago I was utilizing video, you know. I had a videographer come in and shoot my listing videos, but I wasn't the host in it. So two years ago, I started being the host in my videos and that changed everything because people love HGTV shows. Most people are addicted to these, these reality uh, real estate shows. And if you, if you are comfortable being the host in your listing video, it will make a massive difference in the marketing of your client's home. 
So that's what I started doing and the results have been phenomenal. So I decided to create a video about it to get the word out there for, for other sellers because this is a challenging market right now for a lot of homeowners. And many people are wondering, you know, what, what can we do? What are the tactics that we need to do here in 2019 to get our home sold? And I think that is important also for people who are considering to put their house on the market. These are things that you should be looking for, in my opinion, and I just sold and bought a house in the last year, in your real estate agent. Like, Absolutely. what are you going to do to promote uh, my listing apart from putting it in the newspaper? And, you know, what's your next step? Show me how you're going to showcase um, my property. And I absolutely love that video. So that, in, it's a great conclusion. How can we find more about you? How can we find some of your videos? Well, all my videos are on YouTube. So you can, you can certainly just go, go to Craig Veroni Personal Real Estate Corporation on YouTube. Find me there. Uh, on YouTube, there's obviously links to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm on all of those channels. And uh, I post great content every week. So I hope you'll follow me there. And your website is craigverani.com? Dot CA. Oh, dot CA. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yes. Um, all right. Our Canadian culture. Oh, yes. Excellent. Great. Yeah. Okay, dokes. Well, it was an absolute pleasure meeting you. It was really interesting. I took lots of notes and we yeah. will add um, the information. If I'm missing some, I might get a hold of you for some, um, some links on equipment, but uh, we will have this, this information available for everyone. And, uh, and thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Excellent. So that comes to, it's the end of this super fast, I don't know how 30 minutes can fly, but I guess when you're having fun, it does fly. <laughs> so it's the end to our episode and it's going to be on Keep It Simple social media, on um, Facebook. We are going to put it, download the episode and put it on YouTube and on our vlog at keepitsimplesocialmedia.com under social chats with keynotes and links and uh, we hope to see you again in the next episode thank you so much